stuff. Deshaun is in the house. Hey guys, how are you doing? Our live tonight. We come live every Monday night at 7 p.m. And tonight's topic is a big one. Tonight's topic is narcissism. Boy, what a complicated construct narcissism is. I could probably do 30 lectures on narcissism. And um, it's become a popular topic. I see it a lot in social. And um, that's going to be our topic tonight. So we're going to unpack it a little bit, make the unconscious conscious, make the unconscious conscious. Our topic tonight is on narcissism. And uh, of course, I got to do a couple commercials for the folks that make this possible for us to do these lectures and to do most of these services that we do that are free. And um, so I want to shout out Clean Harvest Nutrients. They are our sponsor tonight. And they're an eco-friendly, non-toxic, ready-to-use spray. It's a plant stimulant and micronutrient nutrient that helps your vegetables and your flowers grow. And um, it actually brings the soil back to life. And so love you, Clean Harvest Nutrients. Thank you for doing that. Also, want to shout out our Facebook partners at Positive Happy Life with Upside Thinking. Lisa Marie Platsky is the president of that organization. She sent me something today, too. She's just an exquisite human. I see you guys. Hey, I'm getting glad God directed you here, too, Barbara. And um, she sent me this little card. It says, thinking of you. It shows up to you backwards. Look how pretty that card is. She sent me this card, and it says, Dear Dr. Sean, there, there's only one of you. Yes, you are a one-of-a-kind miracle. Your gifts, abilities, talents, and experiences were given to you for a reason. And I would assert that's true for you too, listening, that you are a one-of-a-kind miracle, that you, are, you have gifts, abilities, and talents, and experiences that are given to you for a reason too. Those just joining, topic tonight is on narcissism. narcissism. I'll look in a second to see what you guys are saying. She sent me that, she also sent me this, because joy is our thing here. We really focus on joy. With all the crap going on, training our minds to find some joy. And um, she sent me this, she sent me delivering joy. And it's these little cards. And today, the one I'm choosing, and I love boundaries. I love boundaries. I love creating boundaries, creating boundaries, telling people my boundaries, finding unique ways to say it, to be as compassionate and loving as I can. And this one says, boundaries protect yourself. It is okay to say no. It is so okay to say no. Boundaries protect yourself. So wanted to shout out those two for supporting us. Also, I am giving something away tonight at the end of the lecture. I usually go about 20, 25, maybe 30 minutes. And I love to give away stuff because that's one of the things that brings me joy. And tonight I'm going to be giving away a pack. It's going to include Kindness is Contagious, or one of our Kindness is Contagious masks. We sell them if you're ever inspired to buy some of our masks. This is part of our commercial. This is one of the ways we raise money. And um, they're soft, they're pliable, they're wonderful and they're washable and we got a holiday special going on i'll be sure to put that link on also along with that mask i'm going to send you a merc animal pack and i love merc i really want them to play with us because i think what they're doing is amazing in the world but this pack um they do a lot for animals i don't know if you know that in terms of animal health there's scissors in here there's um you know, I'm 56, sometimes I can't remember a word. Eyebrow pluckers. Pluckers that help you with your pets. There's tape. There's all kinds of stuff in here. There's gloves. There's antiseptic. So one lucky person is going to win that. I'll tell you how to win it at the end of the lecture. And um, also, too, you can join our Daily daily Joy. We have a Daily, daily Joy email to help generate and navigate during this pandemic. We also have uh, a Joy is a Habit um, Facebook group. Joy is a Habit Facebook group. Thank you for the stars, Tala. You're so awesome. We, Tanya, sorry. We don't know what to do with them yet, but I'm sure we'll find something exquisite to do with them here at Project Forgive um, because we haven't explored. <laughs> also, if you're part of a progressive company that hires virtual presenters to do workshops, you need a platform, we got all that stuff. We do a lot on respect and inclusion and, of course, forgiveness in the workplace. And I'll put a link there, too. Just, you know, whatever I mention tonight, I will put tonight's highlights so you don't even have to take notes and um, give you everything that I tap into or talk about. 
so you so you'll have the information okay all right let's see is there anything else no that's it for the commercials i'm going to be doing something at the end for um giving somebody something in the mail for joy because that's one of the ways i love to give joy um so this whole concept of narcissism oh my gosh you know um my daughter happens to be a psychiatrist and we've talked about this for, through the dsm it's an actual handbook um, that's used by healthcare professionals in the U.S. and much of the world um, as an authorita authoritative guide for the diagnosis of mental disorders. So usually when you think narciss narcissism, you think mental disorder, and that is correct. And because it's part of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, it's in there. Now, I want to talk about narcissism more broadly because we can have narcissistic tendencies. Doesn't mean we're narcissistic or we're diagnosed as, narciss as narcissistic. There's also something that I never heard of. It's called narcissistic fleas. Have you ever heard of narcissistic fleas? What the heck is that? That's when you're in a family system and you take on some of the characteristics, doesn't mean you're diagnosed as narcissistic, and narcissism comes from somewhere and we, we navigate it as adults and then we sometimes give these tendencies to our children and our children's children and our children's children. So one of the things we do here at Project Forgive is we play this game of making the unconscious conscious. So that's one of the things I wanna be doing tonight around this conversation of narcissism. Let's see what you're saying. Let me take you off my little stand here. Let's see what you're saying before we start going into the lecture itself. What you saying, what you saying, what's going on? I see you guys are here. Hey Terry, it's so nice to see you. Vanessa's in the house, Julia. Hi Pat, I'm so glad you're here. Lori's here. Bob and welcome. Connie, you're back. Hey, Linda, Barbara. I already said, hey, I'm so glad God directed you here. Hi, Penny. I'm so glad to see you. Hey, Rini, I'm so glad to see you too. Oh, Cheryl, you rock. And um, our babies are doing great. Our hubby's doing great. I appreciate you. I've been sharing. I have a, a sick dog that has some heart issues and also had a brother-in-law that was in uh, ICU and he's doing much better too. So thank you for that. I see you guys. Let's see anything else you're saying. Hi, Barb. Nice to see you. Hey, thank you, Joan. You are joy too. Hi, Pat. Mary Lou's in the house. I'm so glad. Good. I, oh, you're so great, Jeannie. Oh, you wore your mask to work today, Angie. I'm so glad. Be sure you say how wonderful these masks are. Hi, Maria. From the Niagara Escarpment? I don't know what that is, so let us know what that is. I have no idea. Everyone's saying hi to everyone. Uh, survivor of many narcissists. <laughs> Me freaking too. Oh, my goodness gracious. Aloha, Vivian. Oh, and thank you, to, to, uh, Tanya. Tanya, for those wonderful stars. Thank you so much. Hey, from Kansas, Angeline. Um, beautiful. You, oh, Audrey, I do see this as spiritual healing. I love that you called it that. And um, just so you know, Project Forgive is non-religious. We are nonpartisan. Whatever your spiritual or religious beliefs are, woohoo! We are about inclusivity. And whatever you believe, we love you. Hey, from Melbourne, Marge. Good evening. Yes, you did, Lynn. You probably saw me earlier today. Hi, Jerry from Melbourne. Uh, oh, you are so welcome, Maria. Okay, so I'm seeing a lot of, let's see what you're going to say. There's so many of you talking tonight. That's exquisite. Hi, Ruth Ann. Um, hi from New York. Renee, I see you. Hey, Richard, what's shaking? I'm so glad you're asked, saying stuff about my brother, Evelyn. I so appreciate you. <laughs> Narcissists suck. They really do. <laughs> with you, Joe. You didn't say they suck, but they do. <laughs> oh, Kathy, you are a survivor, and you're probably a thriver, too, at this point, right? Okay, the <laughs> narcissists do suck. Okay, thanks for the stars, you guys. You guys are awesome. All right, so here we go into lecture mode. All right, narcissistic personality disorder. I already mentioned it's in the DSM, the Diagnostic Statistical Manual as an actual mental health disorder. I'm going to talk about it more broadly. Um actually there are many symptoms they're called core features of narcissism and oh you guys are awesome sending all these stars you guys are exquisite so there's like 11 characteristics of narcissists you probably already know this i'm just going to do this for those that don't know i'm just going to go through a quick list just so you know whatever lists i give you i will put them in the notes i pinky swear promise okay 
So here are some of those symptoms th that are included. Grandiosity, very exaggerated sense of self, feel superior to others. Um, feelings, their feelings are often accompanied by fantasies of unlimited success, grandiosity, brilliance, power, and beauty. And they have an excessive need for admiration, being the center of attention, monopolizing time. You ever been in those, um, been with people like that or raised by them? Um, uh, they don't like to feel slighted or mistreated or depleted, and they actually get enraged when they're ignored. Um, they engage in super, superficial and exploitative relationships. Um, relationships are based on service at, service, surface attributes like beauty, power, influence, and um, they really lack empathy. They don't have it. I see empathy as a skill. They don't have that skill. Um, there's something else called identity disturbance. Um, they're extremely rigid and they're often fragile. Narcissists are extremely rigid and often fragile. And they, the way they stabilize themselves is by maintaining the view that they are exceptional. And um, their interactions are superficial. Intimacy is avoided at all costs. Don't get too vulnerable. Don't be, it's one of the reasons my mother was very narcissistic and um, she avoided intimacy so, so deeply. And that last year of her life when it was just me and her, it got broken up like the glass ceiling of narcissism got addressed and talked about in really profound ways. And intimacy is what really deeply shifts that. Um, what else? Difficulty with attachment and dependency. They want to be self-sufficient. Um, uh, their relationships are really about escalating their positive self-image and how they look to others. Um, they actually are pretty empty and quite bored, quite honestly. Um, they have difficulty maintaining, that we're talking about narcissists, they have difficulty maintaining reality-based personal and professional goals, especially over time. They have a hard time with compromising and, um, and their young adults have a failure to launch. Have you ever heard of that term, failure to launch, because the narcissism is so great? Um, narcissism, just so you know, as a personality disorder, has a high risk factor for suicide. I know. Um, and they high sense of shame. They have shame. And it's a couple of things. It's hard to empathize with the narcissist. Um, and here's the thing that I constantly remind myself. This is about making the unconscious conscious. Making the unconscious conscious so we no longer rely on getting our needs met from narcissists. Because that's what happens. If we grew up with narcissistic parents or it was prevalent in our family systems, we still seek out narcissistic people. Woohoo! I was married to a very severe alcoholic when, um, when I was in my early 20s. Deeply narcissism, deep narcissism was a major part of our relationship, and he was also an active alcoholic. And um, so these are the, this is what I learned. This is how you're treated. Can anyone relate to this? Yep, yeah, you're spot on, Betsy. I like what you're saying about these differences. I'm going to talk about this broadly tonight. I probably could speak for six days just on narcissism. So I'm going to stay pretty broad. Um, not as a mental disorder, more as recognizing it, educating yourself, um, what you can do when it's happening with you and for you, and um, some ways you can heal it, okay? And uh, that's what tonight's all about. Okay, perfect. And also as validation that you are not freaking crazy, okay? Uh, <laughs> you're not. And gaslighting goes with the narcissistic behaviors. And so one of the ways that we empathize with narcissists is remembering that they didn't choose to be this way. I know that's a hard one to remember. And their natural development was arrested. It was arrested. And uh, often due to faulty early parenting, parents that didn't have the skill sets. Some believe, some experts and research believes, here, I'm gonna grab this right here because I got tons of notes here that the, the causes lie in extreme closeness with an indulgent mother. It also can come from parental harshness or criticalness. I came from a really harsh environment. 
and although more, more research is needed, there's a couple of studies that revealed a 64% correlation for those that love research um, of narcissistic behaviors suggesting that it has a genetic component. I know, I did not know that. Well, that kind of makes sense to me. That's a high correlation. 64% is a high correlation too. And so when you're in a relationship with a narcissist, I know many of you could even be doing this lecture, couldn't you? Um, narcissists are totally different in public than when they're in private with you. It's like a different game. Um, my, and, I, and I say this with love about my mother. I learned how to deal with my mother pretty beautifully. And um, my mother uh, was very different in public than she was with me alone. And one of the things I did to alleviate the, the harshness, when, even when I was older, is if she thought I was with her alone, that's when the tough stuff would come out at me. So what I would do sometimes, especially when I call her on the phone, I put her on speaker and I'd say, yeah, Terry can hear you meeting my husband. And if she thought my husband could hear her, she was 500% nicer to me. And that was just one of the ways that I dealt with it because like, like I'm gonna find some strategies in dealing with the narcissistic parent because I don't wanna put myself in harm's way. I do wanna have, did wanna have a relationship with her. I, I did wanna have that relationship. And I knew there were certain things that I could do. And one of them was telling her, oh, Terry can hear you. He's saying, hey, so that just because, she, so she didn't think we were alone on a phone call. Does that make sense? I love that tip. It really works. And it worked. Um, let's see. A, a narcissistic partner after the initial romance, they, you, like you have to appreciate them constantly. It's never ending. And um, you have to protect them against they're so le so highly sensitive and very exposed to humiliation through shame so it's like walking on eggshells it reminds me of a severely alcoholic family as well the relationship revolves around them and their experience and actually you as a mate or partner would be an extension of themselves especially we learn this as children too when we come from narcissistic parents that if you did something as a six-year-old it reflected on your parents parenting it wasn't that you were being age appropriate whatever you did at six it became i'm like all right so i'm gonna this is like one example i remember i was four years old maybe five and I was inappropriately, as a five-year-old, because five-year-olds don't know, I was, I was like digging in my underwear. I was pulling my underwear out of my cheeks. You know, <laughs> we do that as kids. We don't know that that's inappropriate until someone teaches us that, right? And I remember doing that in public and my mother just smacking me so hard and saying, quit doing that. You're embarrassing me. And I had no idea what I did. I, it wasn't till later that day that I realized from my mother saying, you know, Keep your go wash your hands don't put your hands by your buttocks and i deeply embarrassed her and shamed her um with not knowing that as a six-year-old you got it or a five-year-old so um and narcissists tend to be perfectionistic um n nothing that others do most of what we do is not right or appreciated and their partners are expected to meet these endless needs of admiration, service, love, purchases. Um, got it. Let's see what you guys are saying about this. Are you relating to this? Yeah, I'm with you, Betsy. And you know, that's a great, I love how you're saying it, Betsy. Exhibiting narcissistic behaviors. That's a great way to put it. Yeah, and you're so right. I'm, you're so right, Betsy. Let's see what else you guys are saying. Making sense? Aw. Anna Lacordeza Rivera. Anna Luck knows Deja. Deja? I don't know how to say that, but maybe you can <laughs> per, like write it out as a pronunciation so I can say your name. That's a beautiful thing that you just shared. Yep. Oh, you're welcome, Sandra. It really works. I love seeing your name, too. Anything else that I need to know? Yeah, you do hope for a change because you grew up too, right? You, if you're sitting here listening to this, you decided to grow up. You decided to grow yourself because people that don't want to grow do not hang out at Project Forget. It just doesn't happen. So if you're here, that says a lot about you. Yeah. Yep. Betsy, I love your comments. I don't know if I've seen you here before. I'm so glad you're here. Yep. Jekyll and Hyde, you're spot on. Okay, perfect. 
and Joan, it can be how you're brought up. And it, you can also come from a family where there isn't narcissistic tendencies. Maybe it's alcoholism or you had rageaholism or a person on pills and there were narcissistic tendencies and you marry someone, right? And you know what, Helen? I'm here to tell you, you do heal. You do. There is hope and light at the end of the tunnel. Is it perfect? No. And you do heal. And so what I thought I, how I would move through this now is like, how are some ways that you can heal from it and through it? And um, I've got a list. So let's see if there's anything else I need to address. Oh, that's a great question, Ruth. What is the reason for the attraction? It's actually unconscious. It's unconscious. And that's why at Project Forgive, we're always about making the unconscious conscious because it's in our hardwiring. It's in how we anthropologically connect with others. It's, you know, you'll hear the nature versus nurture debate. We actually, you know, do you ever find yourself saying, oh my gosh, I can't believe I just said that. That's what my mother would say. We do what we learn, we, we do it, and we're pretty much made by the time we're five or four. And um, so these behaviors are what we repeat generation after generation after generation. And raising consciousness around them is what actually helps them shift. There's a quote you use all the time, Ruth. Um, if you can see it, you can heal it. I can't remember your quote. You know which one I'm talking about, so put it in here. You're spot on with the PTSD. You're spot on, absolutely, Kathy. And uh, Geneva, spot on with codependency. Absolutely. You are spot on. Yep, or both. Let's see if there's anything else I need to say. Oh, Laura, you are exquisite about seem to be jealous of the accomplishments of their children. They can't encourage. They actually see you as competitive. They see themselves as, they don't see themselves as a sibling, and it occurs as a sibling that they're competing with you. You guys are so smart. Okay, perfect. So... I've got an itch, sorry. At least I'm not going to scratch my butt. <laughs> I learned that that's not appropriate in public. For those that missed the joke, I was talking about a story as a five and six year old <laughs> and uh, not knowing that it was inappropriate to pull your underwear out of your butt. Okay, so healing from it. I did find an article from a gal named Julie Hall that I loved. I will put the link up for that article. And um, I'm going to run through some of the things she said because what she said was just exquisite. And one of the biggest things you can do the way you heal is start educating yourself. There are so many articles on narcissism. Educate, educate, educate. And especially if you're new to this conversation, um, learning what, keep learning what you're dealing with. Especially, pardon me, my nose is still itching. Excuse me, sorry. Especially if you are still dealing with parents, um, it's very, very challenging. Um, the more you educate yourself, the more you find support, the more you make the unconscious conscious, the more peaceful you will become, I promise. And it's a journey. It's not a one-hit wonder. It's not, oh, you listen to this lecture, everything's exquisite. I wish that were the case, and it's not, okay? Um, one of the biggest gifts you can give yourself, number two, is to accept that your parent is narcissistic and that it's not going to change. It's kind of like... My analogy, you keep going to your parents at the hardware store to get some milk, and they don't got the milk. And I, when I was dealing with my mother the last year of her life, she passed in January, I was frickin' unstoppable on intimacy, because I knew if I kept going deep, if I kept being intimate, if I kept saying, ouch, that hurts when you talk to me like that, ouch, I don't like that that eventually something was going to shift, and it did. And um, actually, the last year of life with my mother was one of the best years of my life. And it was about being unstoppable and raising my consciousness, accepting, accepting that my mother was not going to change. And that's inevitably what sometimes has people change, when you can accept what's so and start doing what you need to do, right? The other thing to do, too, is recognizing that your parents are enabling. And what, is that, what does that mean? And the way that um, Jill talked about, Julie, pardon me, talked about it in her article, is that the parent of the, whose partner is narcissistic, they condone or help sustain that, oh, that's your dad, there goes your mom again. 
It's like they enable it that it's okay. And when you don't have someone outside of your perimeter to validate you, that's when it can get a little bit wonky, right? That's why we need outside support, whether it's 12-step programs, counseling, exquisite friends that are awake and alive to actually validate for you. And what happens a lot too is um, you recognize that you have roles in your family system. Like, were you the scapegoat? My sister was a scapegoat. Were you the golden child? I was the, the invisible child. So we all have different roles that we go into. And, um, and you, you're going to experience it at the holidays if you're with people on Zoom. Hopefully you're with people on Zoom. We're really big on staying safe and wearing masks and, uh, and not getting too close to folks with uh, social distancing. You know what I'm talking about. You go into this role whenever you're with your entire family system. Like you're, all right, you're plodding along, you have your own family, you have your own kids or grandkids or whatever. As soon as you get in your family system with all your relatives, it's like you go back to being 14. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's like you had this role in the family system and as soon as all the family gets together, you fall in that role. And that's why so many people struggle with the holidays, any holiday, is getting together with our family systems because we have a tendency to go back to these old habits. And that's why it's a struggle. So that's why making the unconscious conscious is a really, really good thing. Boundaries, 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 boundaries. I have done so many lectures on boundaries. You setting your boundaries is one of the best ways to take care of yourself. And boundaries are not one hit wonders either. Boundaries, it took a while for people to treat you a certain way. You keep setting boundaries. And the biggest stretch, if you come from a narcissistic family system or grew up with it, is setting a boundary and letting yourself move through the guilt. Because the hardest thing about setting boundaries is that you feel guilty. You ever experience that? You're like, oh gosh. You know, uh, this is one thing that I'm doing with my husband. Sidebar, to give an example about boundaries. Prior to COVID, I traveled a lot. Now all my trainings are online. I'm not going anywhere. And um, so I'm home all the time. And I'm feeling, what am I feeling? I'm feeling claustrophobic and enmeshed with my husband. Can anybody relate to that? So he's been gone all day today. It's been an awesome day. He's been at his kitchen doing his thing. And um, I need downtime by myself. Who can relate to that? And my husband is just the opposite. If he can sit next to me and touch me all day long, he's so happy. Okay. I love that. That's wonderful. And I also need a break. Who can relate? And I said to my husband two nights ago, I said, Terry, I am struggling figuring out where do I end, where you begin, where's my codependency going, I feel so enmeshed. I need to sleep by myself tonight. I just need the space. I need it. I am going bonkers. He's like, no problem. Okay, we have this sick dog. She's getting up in the middle of the night, so we're not getting a whole lot of sleep over here. And I said, okay, I'll take the couch. So here I am on the couch, and like 3 o'clock in the morning, my husband comes and joins me on the couch. Now, we get, the way that our couch is set up, there's enough room for him. It's still, it's still tight. And when he lays down on the couch, I just want to scream and say, no, I need space, go away. <laughs> and I just couldn't do it because I felt guilty. Right? Who can relate to that? I couldn't assert the boundary. And all boundary is is self-care. It's not to upset people. It's just for your own self-care and your own awareness and awakeness and aliveness. Is this resonating, this story resonating for you? And it's just a basic example. So we ended up sleeping on the couch with me. This was two nights ago. And then yesterday I says, you know, sweetie, I love you so much. And I need some physical boundary space. I have no idea what's going on with me. I'm stressed out. I feel really angry because I feel... I'm also an incest survivor. I'm pretty open talking about that. Sometimes I just need some body boundaries, you know? Especially not traveling and being with them 24-7. So last night I says, Honey Bunny, I, I really got to sleep by myself tonight. Um, and he says, Well, good. How about you take the bed? And I'm like, Cool. So I laid on the bed. I've been watching... <laughs> 
I'm watching, what am I watching on Netflix? I'm watching Cold, Cold Squad, Cold Case, Cold Squad. Um, I love detective shows. And I went to sleep with that in my ear, and I love doing that too. And I had the fan on high, I had the whole bed to myself. I woke up refreshed with space, I could breathe, and was able to come back to my honey bunny, and that was really good. So these boundaries, even if they're as silly as I need to sleep by myself tonight, they're not silly. They're, if you can articulate what you need, especially with anyone that's narcissistic, the trick is letting yourself, once you set a boundary, be really, really uncomfortable when that person has feelings. Narcissists do not like boundaries at all. Um, my mom's biggest thing, she'd roll her eyes. <laughs> We have a rule in our house. There's no eye rolling because it's very shaming. We did made a rule in our house, but when our kids were teenagers too, not allowed to eye roll. If you need to eye roll, you go to your room or you express what's going on that you're really annoyed or irritated because eye rolling is a shaming reaction to something. And um, so yeah, boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. You guys are sending stars. I love that you guys are sending stars. Thank you for that. You really, it really supports us. Um, and, you know, I'm looking at this Julie's article. She also talks a lot about attuning with your feelings. How can you set a boundary if you don't know what your feelings are? Your narcissistic parent or narcissistic person in your life hooked you, did something, and you just want to scream. When you're in that annoyed, agitated, triggered place, you can't find out how you feel. So one of the reasons I wanted to have my own space in the bed is so I could get grounded again and get attuned to my feelings. I don't know what activities you do that help you get grounded, whether it's going to sit outside. Walking is a really cool way to do it. Um, I call it walking meditation, where I feel the heel of my foot and go to the ball of my foot and just really be present to my beautiful feet, gracefully and peacefully touching the earth. And I, th I do it as a prayer and a meditation Thank you for this beautiful earth, God. That's what I'll say. God is my choice when I talk spiritually. Thank you, God, for this beautiful day. Thank you for this beautiful grass. Thank you for letting the breeze hit my face. Those are the kinds of things I say to myself when I'm walking um, to help attune me to my feelings. Um, the other thing, too, when you have narcissistic parents and you start attuning to your feelings or you have narcissism in your life, one of the things that you do is you self-harm. Now, I have a different definition of self-harm. People call it different things. One of the ways that I self-harm is overeating. Can anyone relate to that? So I'm getting better at not eating 14 Reese's peanut butter cups at once. <laughs> but I don't like have a, a bag of cookies in my house because I can sit and eat the whole darn thing in one sitting, okay? Not listening to my body, not listening to when I'm full, um, biting my nails. I still struggle with nail biting. And, um, and that's more of an anxiety issue for me. And there's different things that we do to self-harm. Some people, more alcohol. Some people, um, we don't speak up. That to me is self-harm. And so playing, um, oh, I love that you're getting this, Evelyn. That's so awesome. Thank you everybody for sending all the stars. Yeah, binging is definitely a coping strategy. I love how, I love how you verbiage, Betsy. Are you a speaker? Dang, I like you. Um, the other thing on here too that this gal wrote in this article, which the article I will put up, is being aware of your attraction to narcissists. When you grow up with narcissism or it's in your family system, you don't know any different. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I had a, my first husband, I'm married now, I've been married 25 years to my honey bunny Terry. My first husband, in the summer, he played softball six nights a week. I had two little babies. And I was alone, as a, I was a single mother, married. My husband played baseball six nights a week. The, it was all about his baseball during the summer. And um, I did not get that the reason I picked him as a husband was because of my past and because of the habits that I grew up with and what was deemed normal. And um, don't get me wrong, I am so grateful for my kids. Um, there are blessings in my life and so there's always good stuff with the hard stuff and um, yeah so being aware of your attraction that's about that education and raising your awareness around it I'm looking at my time I'm going a little bit long tonight forgive almost there um, 
And, you know, another big one is um, honor your feelings about your narcissistic parent. And um, I love my mom. I loved my dad. My dad was also a narcissist and a heroin addict. And um, our feelings can be messy when we come from family systems like this. We can deeply love our parents and at the same time be so angry at them, annoyed, grief, anger. It's okay. It's all part of the game. It all goes together. Sometimes you get numb to it too. Anyone else experiencing numb? Or we put ourselves in that self-harm so we can numb, you know, like with alcohol or drugs or whatever. Yeah. Um, here's the, the last thing I want to say about narcissistic fleas before I give something away. Children raised by narcissists, including me, were likely to pick up some I'm <laughs> sorry, honey, buddy. Um, we pick up some nar narcissistic traits or ticks or fleas and um, some of us become full-blown narcissists and but the thing is to perpetuate ways of looking at your behavior at all times because like I'm, get, I'm working on a documentary right now and a lot of my key questions with the documentary for Project Forgive is ooh is this narcissistic am I going way over the top what even when I'm telling stories here does this occur as narcissistic is the story helpful? What is the best way to talk when I'm doing a Facebook Live? So I'm constantly looking at myself like, is this, could this be manipulation? What, do, what is exactly going on right now? And sometimes with my husband, I might even say, you know, when I got angry at you, blah, 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 because you didn't do it right when I asked, I'm, I'm really seeing how that's one of my narcissistic traits, that it's all about me, and I'm really sorry about that. And to talk like that with your partner, is so cool. It's so cool to be able to be that. It moves me. It's so cool to be that transparent, to be that vulnerable, to say this is what I'm working on. It's a really, really cool thing. It takes extra courage to have that kind of intimate conversation with a narcissistic parent because they're not going to give you any milk at the hardware store. And um, it takes extra special courage to do that with a narcissistic parent and ground yourself. Um, and that to me is like one of the, the highest levels of personal development you can do is finally get to that place with your parents where you see them as they are. You're still willing to be your vulnerable, exquisite, authentic, boundary-creating self even with those patterns that are so embedded generationally, right? Yeah. Um, okay. No, uh, I love how you guys are validating each other. Perfect. Let me see if there's anything I need to say before I give something away. Thank you for all the stars. You guys are awesome. I'll let you know what we end up using the stars for here at Project Forgive. Empaths and narcissists. Yep. Um, <laughs> they do like empaths. I'm an empath too. So that's why it's even more important that we protect our emotional health. That's one of the reasons why I needed to sleep by myself, Kathy. It's because I am an empath. I am an empath, and I need to have really strong boundaries. Um, spot on. You guys are so smart. You are so welcome. All right, I'm about to give something away. Whoops. Ooh, crap. Sorry, dropping you. Forgive me. Um, forgive if I didn't get to all your stuff. If there's any questions or comments, I'll be sure to go through. If there's a topic you want me to do next time, holler. Next week, just so you know, we're going to talk about denial. What is plausible denial? When is denial important? When is denial harming you? We're going to explore this whole conversation of denial. And sometimes I purposely go in denial. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to deny that even happened because it's not even worth getting upset about. I'm just going to forgive them in the moment. I'm getting really good at that. And I want to teach that skill next week. So that's what next week's going to be about. Meantime, I'm giving this away. and giving away one of our masks. If you're enthralled by our masks, we have a special on Kindness is Contagious Mask. We have black ones and we have um, white ones. They are exquisite. They're one size fits most. And then you're going to get this Merck Animal Health Pack that has scissors and, uh, look, I can't even think of the word again, uh, pluckers, tweezers, and little band-aids and all kinds of things for like a little um, animal health kit, animal uh, first aid, excuse me, first aid kit. Someone's going to get that. How you're going to win it is like this. I'm going to give you a phrase to say and to type in. And... Um, and once you type in that phrase, you are, I'm going to announce who's the winner. It's going to be the first phrase that shows up here 
um, on my feed, it might show up faster on someone else's feed. My feed is the deciding factor, so it's not fair. It's so random. And when I say that you're the winner, you're just going to message us here on Facebook. You're going to send us your mailing address here in the United States. Forgive, it's for United States folks only. And also your email so you can watch the tracking for the shipping. I had someone say to me, you know, what if it's someone from another country and they pay for the shipping because the shipping is more sometimes twenty dollars or more and we just don't have that funds to do that we're more amenable to like three to five dollars to ship some of this stuff out especially because we we give away a lot of stuff here so we limit it to the united states i'm sorry about that um haven't made plans yet to make it global yet um so if you want to win this what are you gonna say i'm gonna i'm gonna have it be the card today I, what i want you to put in the first person to type this in is our winner Protect yourself. It is okay to say no. Protect yourself. It is okay to say no. First person to put that in. Protect yourself. It is okay to say no. You are going to get this prize. Oh, I'm so glad, Maria. I'm so glad. Thank you for saying that, Joan. First person. Protect yourself. It is okay to say no. Thank you for all... Hey, Betsy, it's you. It's you, Betsy. Send me your address, message us here. It's just me and Hailey in the office that ever see our messages. We never sell your emails or anything. We are so high integrity around that. I will get this out to you in the mail tomorrow. Um, exquisite, exquisite interaction tonight. Thank you guys so much. Thank you everybody. Michael, everybody's playing the game. I love that you're playing the game. Thank you for all the stars tonight. And um, uh, I'll see you daily for our daily joy. Next week is denial. Denial is not a river in Egypt. Is that? That's the, like the cliche. We're going to look at denial. What is denial? What isn't it? What is conscious denial? We're going to explore it in just a beautiful, beautiful way. Okay, big love, everybody. I love you. I will talk to you soon, okay? Bye-bye. Have a great night. Thanks for playing.